Hi everybody, you've probably seen some of my videos over the last few days about the amazing DAISY editor from Inclement Dab and how we can use it to easily create custom JSON, JSON structure files um, and XML snippets for loot that we can then upload to our PlayStation, Xbox and PC servers so you can have custom locations on the map, you know, extra extra buildings extra military tents all that sort of stuff complete with loot spawning in it so it's pretty amazing but a few people have said look that's great but can you take a step backwards you know how do we how do we really get started what, what's what's the real complete beginner's guide to uh, daisy editor on pc what is it that sort of stuff so what that's what this kind of video is all about so the first thing you need to understand is is steam so steam is kind of the is one of the main if not the main um storefront for selling pc games on pc so like on the xbox consoles you go to the xbox store and you buy them on the console when you're on playstation you go to the playstation store and you buy the games on the console steam is is one of those is like that for pc there's other platforms as well like epic and good old games that sort of stuff but steam is is the, definitely the biggest one um, but Steam also not only contains games, is it, but it also contains um, mods for games as well. And that's what Daisy uh, Editor is. So on PC, when you download Daisy, you can apply mods to it that are controlled by by Steam, um, and that makes sure it gets installed in the right place. And then you can you can fire it up, um, and then you can start editing. So the first step really in, in your Daisy PC and Daisy editor journey is to get the Steam client. So, you know, do a Google search for um, Steam. Go to Welcome to Steam and download the Steam client. So you'll end up with the Steam client. It'll look something like this. It'll have a different message on it. And the next thing you need to do is you'll need to buy a copy of DayZ. Now, luckily at the moment, it's uh, on sale. So I would always say, you know, buy it when it's on sale. Um, even I guess if it's even if it's not on sale, you know, still buy it because it's such an amazing game. You're gonna get years and years of fun out of it. So when when you've got it, it'll ask you to uh, download it. So you can download it, fire it up, you know, close it up again, let let it run through at least once. And then what you want to do is you go to the community tab and you go to workshop in the Steam client. And that will then load up. And then it says search for a workshop. And you'll search for the Daisy workshop. Like so. And there's loads of wonderful stuff in here. You can spend hours. In fact, Daisy Raft, that's a new one that I want to have a look at. And we'd search for the workshop for editor in this particular case. And there we go. So we've got Daisy editor. So let's click on the Daisy editor and let's have a look. Um, now, what we can do is if you click on the sub subscribe button that will then start downloading the daisy editor to the correct place on your on your computer um the daisy editor needs some other mods as well to run so uh, cf builder items and dabs framework so if you click on those go through to that particular bit and subscribe that way remember these are all free these these mods and subscribe to all of those they will then all be downloading um and they'll be put in in the right place and once they're all finished, you'll see at the bottom there's a thing that says Downloads 101 Complete. Double click on Daisy, so you'll have an icon on your desktop, or you can always go into your library. Excuse me. Uh, if I, uh, here we go, Home. You can always go to, be down here somewhere, Daisy, and you click on it, and it would, your one will say Play. So you click on Play, and you'll end up with... The Daisy Launcher. Now, this is a bit of a weird thing with with PC games. We don't kind of see this thing on console, but in order to play Daisy, you have to run a different program to start off with. And this program kind of sets up the Daisy program, so it adds things like the, the the mods, and it's how you pick your servers. So, for example, you know, like we do have a we do have the server browser on on console, don't we? Where you go to it, and you can pick through official servers, or you can go onto the community tab and and, and pick those sorts of things. Let's clear that and that will then appear but we've got this mods bit as well so if you click on the mods bit um let me just unload all of these you, you'll have a list of you'll probably be subscribing to quite a few different mods and all you want to do is you just search for editor and then daisy editor will appear and you just click on that and it'll say look in order to work we need to load these mods as well so you say yep load those mods 
and Daisy Editor is a is a local offline mod. So we're not going to go into a server and play it with like that, but you can't. All we're going to do is just going to click play. And this will then start to fire up Daisy and the Daisy Editor mod. And we're literally going to be playing it on our own sort of running copy of Daisy on our local PC or laptop. This is a great way to um, explore um, Chernarus or Livonia. And you can, when you learn how to install other maps as well, you, you can do all that sort of stuff. Um, you can't really play the game in Daisy Editor, but if you do a quick Google search for things like um, Daisy, how to install Daisy local server, you can have a, a, a version of Daisy running on your local PC that gives you a, a single player version of it. And the Daisy Editor loads in the map whether it be Chernarus or Enoch you know Livonia um, and then it enables us to place objects on that map now it does lots of other things as well but for console in particular that's what we're really interested in um, the ability to place objects and then extract that information in a way that we can then use so we get to the kind of the launch screen and we just click on open editor and then we choose whether it's Chernarus or Enoch, Enoch being the um, uh, Livonia. So we just say select, then it starts firing it up again. Lots of loading when you're playing PC games. That's an interesting idea that, isn't it? Putting houses out in the sea. I don't think it's a reflection. I think what they've done there is that they have put a house on its side as well to go up that way. Here we go. So it's all loading up slowly but surely. Recording all this real time. No editing on my videos. You know me. Straight string cast with audio. No messing around with other stuff. This will then pop in. Here we go. Right, then everything loads in. So we are now on Chernarus. So if we press the M key, and then we can um, scroll out using our, if we roll our mouse wheel. I might actually put a suggestion that if they could put this, the place names in uh, English as well as in um, in Czech or Russian. And there we've got, so you can see some obvious things like there's the Northwest Airfield, there's the Northeast Airfield, and that's where our camera is, where that little kind of arrow is. So if you just click in your mouse wheel, that will change where your camera is. Let's say, and then, let's put it there. And then if we press M again, we'll then move to that particular location. Now, when you can see your cursor, if you um, uh, right click and hold it down and then drag, you can move around like so to have a look around. Um, and then you can use WASD to move around. Now, if you press shift at the same time, that will then speed you up. And also, if you go into editor uh, preferences, you can speed change the speed of the camera. Now, I recommend you keep the speed of the camera fairly low because although it's all right for whizzing around the map with a high camera speed, it's not very good for placing objects. So let's go over here. So I'm just... Now, the other thing we do is if we press the space bar, we then go into free look mode. So the mouse is now controlling where we're looking and then we can still use WASD. It's WASD to move around and then it's Q and Z to go up and down and shift to go faster. But I prefer to do it like this with right click dragging. So we've come to this rather barren part of the northeast airfield. So what we want to do now is we want to place something. Um, so you'll see on the left we've got loads of different stuff. In fact, if we if it just looks like that, you can click that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we've got this list of, of things that we can place. Now, what we really want, we're on console. We're just really interested in things that begin with the word land. Because that means we'll probably be able to place them on the map and they will probably appear when we create the JSON file. A technique that I tell people to use is to go to I survive um, and 
scroll in and if you want to uh, load in a particular building think about where you've seen it on the i survive map and then if you just click on that particular place where you've seen it it then tells you okay so that's a container and it gives you the name of the container so let's go up here a little bit say to there we go so click on that so that's the prison land mill barracks five so what we can do is if we if we highlight that and you do th this will speed things up but if you do control c to copy that and then when you go back to daisy and then we'll back to paste that and then just do control v to paste it Oop, not like that i didn't do that right did i let's go back in fact let's highlight that right click copy that copy did it let's go back here click up there control v to paste it there you go land mill barracks five see it's there and then what we do is you just left click and hold and then drag that across we can drag that onto the map we can kind of move it around and you can play around there's different modes that you can do it's magnet mode ground mode collision mode to, to line things up but i tend to find doing things by eye is probably the easiest way so we've got this and we can look around it. um and you can change the angle that you look at and the way we kind of control it is via this blue box so if we left click and hold we can then move that around now while we're doing that if we press the alt button left alt and go up and down with our mouse we can change the altitude or if we press the shift button we can turn it around it's very sensitive that um, the other thing we do is while the, the blue square is highlighted you can also use the arrow keys let's move things around and if we press shift you can move it really 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 slowly so what you'll notice with the buildings is that they all have a bit of foundations um, and the clue is generally on the side that will have the um, steps in fact this building is kind of around the wrong way isn't it so let's so we click on that press shift and turn it around Get it roughly facing the right way. Okay. Yeah, so the clue is often with the the steps. Because you obviously that step's a little bit big. And then you have the shadow underneath. So what we do is we press the blue button. And then we uh, left click and hold. Press alt. And then we can drag it down. And you'll see where it starts to go into the ground. And then when you're happy with your altitude, just release your left click. And then we've got the building in. Now, if you click somewhere on the ground and then press T, that will transport your little worker there. So if you then press home, your fellow appears and you can press V. Now, this is very, very important because this means you can now wander around and you can make sure everything looks okay and you haven't got, like, trees clipping into the building. I mean, if you don't, I mean, you might well want that. You might want it to look like the zombie apocalypse. But this is super, super important to look for things like where something might be, you know, uh, floating in midair. And you'll see it a lot easier in this mode because, you know, you can get right down. You can crawl around like a, like a real player would to make sure everything's OK. Now, there may well be fine adjustments you need to make. So if you press home to go back to the editing screen again, if you want to do fine adjustments, press space to get the cursor back. If you double click the little box, we get the properties box up. And in the properties box, we've got X, Y, and Z. So X and Y, X and Z are like the latitude and longitude. And Y is the altitude of the item. And what you can do is if you just click into one of these boxes, left click in, and then you can use your mouse uh, wheel if you just roll your mouse wheel it will move backwards and forwards if you press shift in it will move it slower and you can actually type in here as well so 0.15 so you can change things manually so let's click click in y and you'll see we can now go up and down and then shift to do it slowly and then we got z move it backwards and forwards and then x y and z these are the uh, roll pitch and your actually that's probably your um, so as you can see, we, we're rolling it around. If we go to Y, going backwards and forwards that way. Turn it back to zero and Z. We're doing it that way. Now the reason why you'll want to do this often is if you're placing buildings or objects on uneven surfaces. 
Now, I don't recommend you go and then just press OK. Now, I don't recommend you go too mad with, especially buildings, with making them be at wonky angles because they start to look a bit odd. There's nothing wrong with having a building dig into the ground at one end because, as we know, as we know, the buildings have quite a lot of foundation. So you can afford to have a building digging into to the side of a hill because you've got all of this to play with. You've just got to make sure that your um, your steps, for example, uh, aren't looking a bit odd, like they're too high, and you haven't got the hill sort of digging into the side because the ground will, or another, and permanent structures on the map will always clip into your building. Unfortunately, we can't, for example, have a building that's underground, say like a, a police station, and a, they use that as an underground bunker because the ground clips through the building, preventing players from going through it. So as you're building, and then to, to get another thing, and let's do, I, quite, I always like tents. Tents are good. So land mill tent. Ooh. We can put a tent there and put it into the, put it into the ground, sort of thing like that. So you know, you so you make your scene like this sort of thing, and what you want to do as you're going along, you want to go file, uh, save, save as, and you want to put it in, um, and you put in your yeah, um, example. Let's click in the right box. Example uh, mission, something like that. Okay, so that way, this is saving everything we've done. We haven't exported anything. That way, if we make a mistake, if the program crashes, we've got to go away or load it up again. We can always load it up. Um, and then you proceed to create your mission. Make sure you save it regularly. Um, use uh, uh, I Survive to find stuff. You'll see on the left-hand side, you'll see things that say Builder. Now, the Builder objects are part of a different... Uh, the, one of the PC mods that loads in with the editor. We can't use those on console. On PC, you can if you load that mod to your server and people have it on their clients, but we can't use it, which is unfortunate. Also, you'll find that everything is on here. So for example, we can place an M4 suppressor. The only thing I'm not really sure about is how that affects it within the, the loot table. Um, so although you can place things down, that doesn't look like an M4 suppressor, does it? Um, it's probably best not to use um, this method to support to spawn simple items into the world you want to be spawning them in using the central loot economy um, you know with an event or something like that so the item is uh, they they're keeping an eye on the on the on the item um, so just use it for buildings for structures and that sort of stuff um, and also I would say that don't be too disappointed by the lack of um, walls and um sandbags and things like that because there's there, often there's there's an alternative for stuff so for example for building walls one of the things you might want to look for is containers so you could use like military containers to make walls also if we look for fence um here we go, we've got gates. Now these are all, we can use all this sort of thing to, to build um, enclosures around things. And the other thing I would say as well, as well is, feel, one of the most powerful things to do within with the editor is to build extra objects and extra structures around existing ones. So it really does fit in you know, with the kind of the, the environment that, that you're in. Um, you know, and have a bit of fun. Have pl play around. Keep saving regularly. Um, keep your eye out on YouTube and in the various discords um, for the, the different ideas people are coming up with. Because actually, there is one one final tip I'll say as well. Remember, we can place stuff um, wherever we like in terms of altitude. So let's say. What you could do, for example, and pitch and roll. So let's find something that could be, we could use. Okay, so let's let's take this little thing for example. So this is this is just a, a concrete block, isn't it? You know. Um, but who's to say 
we, we couldn't use it something like this. We could go in. I could probably do this quicker, so we did minus 90. We could use structures on their sides. We can sink them into the ground. You know, we can double them up. Um, we can do, say, uh, control C, control V. Let's just copy that. Let's paste that in. Could. Spin this all the way round. Something like that. start to create some sort of structure I mean that, that's, that's not a brilliant example but you can see if you had a few of those you could then start to make a wall so look at the various things and don't just think about them in terms of the building they are when they're sitting on the ground as a proper building think about how you could you could turn them over and tip them up and flip them upside down to create different um, structures that you can then use you know you can sink them into the ground to, to make walls in a way that we can't because you know you simply can't you know sp spawn in some things on console so what I'll do as well is in the description below this video I'll put the various links to the daisy editor on steam um, and the daisy editors wiki because there's lots of uh, um, instructions on there how to use it and also there's uh, links to the daisy editors discord um, but also put a link to my tutorial on the next step which is then exporting this data from the daisy editor so you can then create those custom spawn location json files for your xbox playstation or pc server but hopefully this has been useful and gets you you know a complete beginner's guide to getting started in the editor and it may, maybe you're thinking about doing this because it's incredibly easy and it's um quite addictive as well anyway that's enough from me hopefully you found that useful if you have hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and i'll see you again soon